What do you mean it's about time you did an air gun review, rack and load? Yeah, I know, it seems like it's been a while, but uh, I don't know why. I seem to be sort of chugging through more firearms of late rather than air guns. And I actually prefer, believe it or not, doing air guns. Well, I won't say prefer. Um, it's just easier doing air guns and it's cheaper as well. Loads cheaper on ammunition because yeah, I ain't got an ammo sponsor. So if you thought that, think again. I uh, plow my own money into these videos to get these videos out to you with little, little reward. Can you hear the violins? Now I'm only kidding guys. But no, I do actually, you know, put my own money into, into these videos, you know. So it's nice, what I'm saying is it's nice to uh, do an air gun every now and again. It's nice and cheap, you know. Dinner pellets is just cheap compared to ammunition. Powder burning ammunition, that is. Anyway, enough said. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load. Just not moaning, but uh, just putting the point across. Air gun review. God, it, like I said, it, it, it does feel uh, a while since I've uh, since I've done one. But this is a pretty pretty cool air rifle. This is the Stoger RX20, and it's a break barrel air rifle, and it is very very unusual looking, don't you think? Check out the muzzle. Very very weird. I'll talk more about that in a minute, but. Let's just uh, take you through this thing then and uh, we'll, uh, we'll sort of, uh, you know, go through it all and I'll tell you good, point, good points, bad points and what I think of it. You know, in a usual rack and load style. Let's throw out some specs then. So obviously it's a brake barrel. Um, you load the pellet straight into the breech in the barrel. Um, it is a spring powered brake barrel. Um, fully ambidextrous, uh, the stock is what they call the human tech design um, with a pro adaptive checkering. Okay, I'll, I'll go more into that in, in a minute. Uh, black synthetic rifle barrel, a blue steel barrel, not that you can see much of it because it is sort of all hidden in uh, that sort of shroud stroke suppressor. Comes with a four times 32 scope. Total length is 44 inches. Uh, barrel length is 14 inches. Weight without the scope is three kilograms. So it's uh, it's not mega light, you know, when, by the time you put the scope on it. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's doable. It's doable. It's, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's not, it's not mega, mega lightweight. I'll just drop my microphone there. It's not mega, mega lightweight for what it is. Um, but, um, you know, if it's too heavy, go to the gym. That's all I'm going to say. Go to the gym. So let's take a close look. But first, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to show you something pretty cool. Because I, I had uh, one of the original... Um, Stogers when they first come out and I've reviewed one or two on here and I've still got this one. <laughs> Check it out. So it's a bit of a comparison. It's quite funny. See how far they've come. Now I've had this. I hardly use it to be fair. Uh, I've had it quite a while. Um, well, pretty much after they first come out. This is the, it's got a bit of rust actually. Oh dear. I need to I need to give it a bit of a clean up actually, that's a bit shocking. This is, I think this, I forget what it is now, I think it's the X10. I think, I'm pretty sure it's the X10. Let me just refer to my uh, my manual here that I've got. Uh, it's the same as the, yeah, is it, it's the, yeah, it's the X20. It's, yeah, it's the X20, the original sort of X20 um, from what I can see. Same as the ATAC. I've had an ATAC on the channel. Um, showed you one of them, but this is the X20. Couldn't remember what it's called. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I'll show you the manual in a bit anyway. Um, yeah, the problem that everyone used to have with these, well, it's kind of like look of the draw, really. Uh, the trigger, 
on these things was horrendous. And if you got one that was, mm, then you were flipping well lucky, tell ya, because they were truly, truly horrendous. I've got a bug flying in here. That is gonna do my head in. Um, but yeah, um, they were just horrendous, the triggers were. And I think on this one, um, it's pretty horrendous on this one I've got here. So, you know, it is what it is. And the second problem that you'd have with them was the, the integral um, suppressor, just for some reason, didn't like a lot of pellets. And in my testing, I'd end up having pellets going through the paper target sideways. They'd basically just be, be tumbling down the range. And it just, I, I don't know, it just drive drive you insane. Good thing about the the old X20 though is the scope that it came with. And by the way, these do come uh, with scopes, which is pretty cool, really. I'm not, all right, let's just say it right. They're not high end air guns, are they? You know, the back garden plinkers. Um, you know, you're going to pay sort of under well under two hundred quid for these, and you get a scope, you get the mounts. You know, you're, pr you're pretty much ready to rock. Um, so we can't sort of grumble at the price point, can we? You know, back garden plin plinkers, tin can bashers, maybe rat guns, bit of a ratty, you know, if you, if you want to sort of go break barrel style if that makes sense. Um, but no, the old, the old X20 was all right, you know, but it's just the triggers were a bit ropey. Look, like I say, look at the draw with the triggers. Um, the suppressor, not good with, with some pellets, just making them tumble down range. But they've come a little, come on a little bit, little bit. So let's move this out of the way. But yeah, that's the old X20. But the scope on this was, I think, a bit sort of better spec than what you get with the RX20. Let's get that out of the way. Oh, and that was another thing as well. Some of them weren't... Uh, weren't sort of, what's the word? Crowned, if that is that the word? So they weren't sort of reamed out. I don't know, I don't know what you call it. I don't know the terminology. I'm no engineer or gunsmith. But see that one is, I think I did this one myself actually with um, like a countersink drill or, or metal, yeah, metal countersink drill. I'm sure I did just to ream it out a bit because when I got this thing, it wasn't. So basically you put a pellet in and because it wouldn't sit sort of into the barrel, you closed the barrel up and that had uh, damaged the skirt of the pellet. So that didn't help accuracy either. But, hey ho, few years into the future, we have the RX20 and it's a lot better. It is a lot better. Although the trigger's still not amazing, if I'm honest. But it's 175 quid, this rifle is, so, you know, it is what it is. Maybe you could strip the trigger down, give it a bit of a tickle, you know, you guys that like to tinker. Don't know, don't know. But anyway, this is the RX20. Let's have a closer look. I've given you the specs of this thing. First thing that's striking about it is the barrel. Okay, now this is quite interesting. It's an ergonomic barrel, so it makes cocking way more comfortable, but the muzzle or the, or the barrel in there stops about there and then the rest is um, a suppressor, integral suppressor. And underneath it has got like, um, I forget what they call it now, like a, an expansion chamber for the air to sort of come back on itself, which is quite interesting, excuse me. Um, so yeah, it's quite quite a, an unusual uh, suppressor. Difference with this as well and uh, the X20, this one comes with decent sights, whereas, well, the X20 don't come with any sights, just comes with a scope, but this comes with both, which is really, really quite cool. So let's take it from the butt end. Now there is your recoil pad. And then this is what Stoger are calling their, what's the terminology? I need to get it right. It's what they call their human tech design, okay? Or pro-adaptive checkering. So basically it looks like checkering that's worn out. <laughs> it, 
in a nutshell, and it's all over the place. And I quite like it, actually. It does look quite good. It, it's subtle. It's more, well, I say checkering. It's more like sort of dimpling. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Got it in various areas. Got it in on the top of the barrel as well. Sort of just fades out, look. Eh, that's pretty cool. I kind of like it. You know, it's, it's different. And that's what I like about these Stogers. They certainly are different. Certainly are. But yeah, the recoil pad. Recoil pad, butt pad. Uh, medium to hard rubber. And then obviously ambidextrous, synthetic stock, feels pretty solid. Doesn't feel sort of, you know, hollow and echoey. Um, you know, like I say, am ambidextrous. In fact, everything on this rifle is ambidextrous, so that's kind of nice. And then, like I said, um, spring operated, spring powered even. Uh, that uh, suppressor, by the way, is what they call the S3 suppressor. It's got it sort of etched on the side. Okay, so this is the sport version. So notice uh, the stock, obviously all sort of synthetic, uh, the pistol grip, uh, pistol grip, the uh, trigger guard sort of all flows. Uh, that is not a, a trigger adjustment, by the way. That's your takedown nut there. And then you've got two sort of mm, screws there to sort of take the stock off if you so wish for when you want to give it a bit of a trigger job. Highly recommended. Um, and then moving along to, uh, well, notice, I'm sort of skipping ahead here, the pistol grip has got the, these panels here, and there's a screw there. And the fore end has got two as well. Still got this pro-adaptive uh, checker in. Quite interesting, but why have they got screws in? That's because, you can really sort of customize this thing because it comes with some different colored bits and pieces. So you can pretty much pimp it up. You can take off the, let me get the right side. You can basically swap these out, okay? And uh, throw on your own, like so, as I'm demonstrating. So it's like, it's like a Barbie doll. You can dress it up however you want. So that looks pretty cool. You've got the orange bits as well. I'm taking pot lock here if I get the right side of them. So that's blue. Ta -da. I'm not going to strip it down. I'm just going to sort of do that. So that's blue, obviously. Have I got the right side here? Oh, 50-50 chance. Oh my God, I've done it again. In fact, you know what? They'd be the right. They'd all be correct, wouldn't they? Would they? No, of course they wouldn't. Well, that's just pot lock, anyway. And that's orange. Oh, I guess you could. Bit of a mix and match. You could really sort of dress this thing up. So that's, that's pretty cool. I think that is cool. And these have got um, like a different grip as well. So if you're not keen on the sort of pro adaptive checkering, um, you can sort of roll with uh, this. It's more like a stippling effect. I don't know. I think I think it's pretty cool. It's, it's a good idea. Really good idea. You know, something different. You know, I like innovation. I like you know, bit of, bit of uh, customizability there, you know, and for a for 175 quid gun, that is cool, that is cool, because chances are it's gonna be, you know, a new shooter, a young shooter that's um, gonna sort of have one of these as possibly a first gun. Really cool, really cool. Um, then moving along, so that's your stock basically. Um, the, uh, receiver, well it is what it is, that's just basically your pistons in there. Uh, it's got an automatic safety catch um, on it as well, which is exactly the same as the old uh, X20. I hope I'm getting the name of this right, right. X20, I'm sure it is, it's not marked up anywhere. I'm sure it's the X20. God, I really should do my research. So it's the same automatic safety. So as you, I'm not gonna cock it, because I'll have to dry fire it but um when you do when you do cock it i don't know if you can decock it actually oh i've done it now man i so as you do cock it the uh safety sort of kicks out so to speak i wonder if you can decock it no you can't so there's there's your safety catch you can put it take it on and put it off 
So, you know, that's, that's quite cool. So yeah, the safety catch is pretty good. I mean, I'm not a massive fan of safety catches. It, well, automatic safety catches, that is. Um, but uh, yeah, that's not bad and it's kind of in the right place. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. The scope that is supplied, uh, this one is 4 to 32. It's pretty basic, but it'll, you know, it'll get you going. Uh, I mean, for the price point, you know, it's not bad. I mean, like I said, the one on the, the older version is a zoom scope, three to nine times 40. So it is a slightly bigger scope, you know, and it does, I don't know, maybe, maybe Stoger have got a bit tight <laughs> when it comes to the old pennies. So, um, but yeah, it's kind of a shame really. It's not a bad scope, but you know, you'd probably want something a little bit better. It depends what you're doing. For back garden plinking, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's just cool the fact that you get a scope with the rifle anyway. You know, it's, it's just, it just saves a bit of an expense, doesn't it? If you don't want to run the scope, you have got some pretty good fibre optic uh, sights. So there's your rear. That's my camera will focus. So that's really cool. I'm, I'm a big fan of fiber optic sights. There's your front one. That is massive, that thing is. Interchangeable as well, so you can swap that out. Uh, you can also, I'm not gonna do it on camera because it'd be a nightmare and it is a nightmare. You can take this cover off and actually take the um, baffles out, so to speak. I'll show you. I'll show you on the box because it sort of uh, shows you a bit better in, in bit better detail on the box. Or have I got that wrong? No, I've probably got that wrong, actually. I've seen it somewhere. I think it's on their website. I'll, uh, I'll throw in a picture. And it, it basically explains how it, how it works. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Is it quiet? Yeah, it's quiet enough. I mean, with a Springer, you always get the sound of the actual piston, don't you? You know, um, I think uh, suppresses, stroke silences tend to work better, what well, stroke moderators, uh, tend to work better on PCP air rifles, but eh, it's cool, it's cool. It, there's a lot of features on this rifle, you know, for, for you know, a cheap uh, back garden plinker, you know, there's a hell of a lot of features, and I've, I do, do really think that is cool. Now, let's get the gripe out of the way, and the biggest gripe is the trigger. Still not amazing, the triggers aren't. Uh, they just aren't, sorry Stoger. Uh, unless this is, um, you know, a bad rifle, but I don't think it is, you know. I don't know, there was just a lot of take up on it and it just seems a bit of, a bit unpredictable. Maybe, yeah, I, I get that it's a, it's a new rifle. It might wear in a bit after like, I mean, I've only probably put 200 shots through it, something like that. You know, after maybe a thousand, it'll probably wear in a little bit. So, it is what it is. It is what it is. What do you expect for a 175 quid air rifle? What do you expect? An electronic trigger or something? Ain't gonna happen, is it, at that price point? Um, so, moving on to, well, what we've sort of mentioned, the trigger. Let's talk about accuracy. Now, I was using, and it seemed to like these actually, Acupel FTs. I did use a few different flavors, but I had more of these sort of uh, on hand. So I just stuck with these, got it zeroed with these and uh, just ran it basically. And it didn't do bad. I mean, this is my shooting as well. So bear in mind, uh, you gotta take, always take that into account. But this is 30 yards and I was pretty damn impressed. Pretty damn impressed. And this is obviously shooting off a bench, but check this out. 30 yards, yeah, that one's a bit, I would have expected them all like that at 30 yards, if I'm honest. But look how they're coming in. That is not bad. 30 yards, guys. That is really quite good for a sub 200 pound brake barrel air rifle, a Springer. That really ain't bad at all. That is acceptable. That seriously is acceptable. And that was using, for the record, Acupel FT, so if you've got one of these or you're getting one of these, feed it these. It seems to 
seems to like them. Let's, we'll break the barrel. Um, I did, by the way, when I uh, cocked it, I did uh, have to discharge it outside with a pellet in, into my pellet stop. So I didn't uh, dry fire it. But there is uh, your guts, kind of, kind of, so to speak. Linkages there. Okay. You know, everything's pretty solid. No sort of real side, sideways wobble or anything. No rattles, rattle check. Can't really hear anything rattling. So yeah, not bad, not bad. You know, I, I am genuinely impressed with this little air rifle. Um, just the trigger, but let's not even go there. It's just a cool little air rifle. For a beginner, you know, um, for a young shooter, just getting into it, perfect. You know, limited funds, whatever. For 175 quid, you can't go wrong, can you? Unless you get a high end, a higher end uh, air rifle, second hand. Right, let's have a look at the manual. Manual's not bad, just moving everything out of the way. It pretty much covers all models. Uh, it's mainly just, uh, it's nice that the English is in the, uh, the front as well. It's all in black and white. Um, it's, but it's basically all your do's and don'ts to start with. Um, and then just sort of just walks around the air rifle, um, tells you all your, all your functions and whatnot, uh, how to load it. Um, so yeah, you can actually, and I didn't do this because this is a loaner, um, from Livens Gun Shop, by the way, uh, thanks to Livens Gun Shop for the loaner. Um, you can adjust the trigger on it. Uh, I didn't really mess with it. Um, so maybe maybe you can crank it down, make it a bit better. Um, it reduces, it says here, I've just read it, so I, I might have to take back what I've said about the, uh, about the uh, trigger pull. So you can reduce the second stage length. Okay, so the word misses. So yeah, that's, that probably would make the trigger a bit better. So I did, like I say, I didn't mess about with that, but that is probably, that this was probably wound right out then. So, so yeah. Fiddle with the trigger. It probably ain't as bad as I'm making out. So, um, moving along, you've got all your just your all your boring stuff, really. Warranty, whatnot. So, so it's a it's a bit basic. The um, the manual is, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory though. The, the rifle is, um, you know, it's well, it is, isn't it? I mean, you don't need to. Um, read the instructions on how to swap the panels, for example, on the uh, stock. It comes with an Allen key in the bag, which is in there. So, oh, there is, I've just noticed actually, there is a spare front sight by the looks of it in orange. So that's cool. How cool is that? So if you want to swap out the red for the orange, that's that's doable. That's cool. I mean, like I said, this this rifle is packed, packed with features. So it's really, really cool. So yeah, guys, that is it. That is your rack and load review of the Stoger RX20. I'll just show you the box. So just sort of shows you S3 suppressor, multi-grip system. That's what they're calling the bag of bits. Pro adaptive checkering and human tech design. Basically, ergonomically, it's it's um, you know it's comfortable. It is. It's it's a cool it's a cool little rifle. I found it very comfortable actually. God, that fly's still in here. It's doing my head in. It will die. It will die. It's flying around my my lights. Yeah, I mean the fore end. I didn't mention it. It's pretty pretty fat. Pretty um, sort of wide. So I don't know. Just a comfortable. Comfortable air rifle, really comfortable. So, but anyway, guys, like I said, that is it. That is your rack and load review of the Stoger RX20. Perfect back garden plinker for sub £200 here in the UK. Prices may vary in whatever country you're in, but not bad, not bad at all. Anyway, thanks for watching. That is rack and load.
See ya.